This is my surly big dummy long tail cargo bike and I absolutely love it. Actually, I still love it even having discovered how terrible it is as a cargo bike. Don't get me wrong, it does everything it should, but no modern cargo bike has a center of gravity this high. Yeah, I've seen a lot of newer, better cargo bikes here, and they're not built like this. This has a steel frame. It flexes around like a wet noodle when it's loaded down. It's pretty hard to mount this thing. It's not gonna win any beauty contests, and it has 26 inch wheels. That's actually really big for a cargo bike. A lot of cargo bikes have wheels as small as 20 inches because it brings the center of gravity closer to the ground. When a kid is sitting up here or it's loaded down with cargo, smaller wheels would really help just bring all that weight lower down and make the bike more manageable. But if I had smaller wheels in this bike, I wouldn't be able to get into as much trouble with it. That kind of stuff is no big deal. I've been doing that every day. That's why I built this bike, to follow my daughter around on her balance bike. We're not going on super hardcore trails. The bike handles it just fine, and it even has a built-in bell. It just rings when I hit bumps. Let's ride a little more of this stuff and then ramp it up. Now it is true that in addition to this being a terrible cargo bike, also a pretty bad mountain bike. You can get high centered on it pretty easy if you come up to a rock and two flat spots. There is no suspension and the geometry is aircraft carrier. Let's ramp it up just a little bit. It's a rainbow bridge. So I don't see any immediate issues with riding this on the cargo bike. You just kind of go fast and steer. But on a mountain bike, you're a lot more stable. The geometry lends itself to throwing your weight around. And if you have to bail, it's a heck of a lot easier, way less carnage. I guess I gotta just do it. So that was interesting, but my prediction was it should just work. What's the problem with it? I was 100% right. So I think when it comes to everything else, riding single track, all that, uh, this is also gonna do great. Let's do this little hand cut climb over here and see how it goes. I don't think a lot of people would have made it up that on a mountain bike. I mean, I see pedal strikes all over these rocks. This thing's amazing, just as I predicted. I'm astonished at how well this bike climbed. And by the way, I'm not surprised that you can take this off road. Like I said, it's got the big wheels, but also I know people that use these for trail building. They load them down with chainsaws and tools and everything and take them out into the backcountry. But I'm just envisioning them climbing dirt roads and stuff. That was real single track and it didn't even get high centered. I was ratcheting my pedals and it was working, but now we're at the top of a hill and we gotta go down. So I know how I'm gonna do this, slow. When climbing, I don't really have many concerns because I'm going really slow and you just get hung up on stuff. When you're descending, you kind of keep going and it's not gonna be easy to stop that thing. It doesn't have big knobby tires, doesn't have suspension, has mechanical disc brakes. And what I'm really worried about is breaking my big dummy. I, I love this bike. I don't want to break it. And so I'm going to be careful. I'm going to be careful. All 
All right, we ran into our first problem. On the really technical stuff, the departure angle is such that my bike rack holds my daughter's bike on the back, hits into the rocks. But I brought tools. I don't want to mess up my bike rack, so I'm going to take it off and throw it in the bag, and we will continue. Oh no. Oh. So these tires, they're basically street tires. And so loose chundery stuff, that's where this is weakest. It descends like a pipe organ. I don't care to do that anymore. Never do I plan on doing anything like that on this bike again, let alone when my daughter's on the back. But I'll tell you this, I'm sorry I underestimated it. I'm also sorry for what I've just been doing to this thing because I really like this bike. One thing it's really good at is keeping you from going over the handlebars. If you're going over the handlebars on this bike, you're doing something really, really wrong. And that gets me thinking, how would it perform on jumps? I have no idea what this thing does in the air. Does the tail just drop? Is it completely impossible to manage? Do you just wash out immediately when you land? I'm gonna try a small jump. I'm only doing it once. I'm just gonna hit this baby jump. We're gonna see what happens. That didn't feel that bad. I'm gonna try it again, but try and keep the tail from popping up. That was scary. That jump went a little bit too well. I started saying all sorts of crazy stuff, let's go hit some bigger jumps. But you know what, we're gonna end it here. This has all been very educational. I'm sorry I said that this was a terrible bike in the morning. Yeah, it's not a really good road going cargo bike, not compared to the modern ones, but it can do so much more. We did technical climbs, technical descents. We did jumps. You can even get your groceries on it. This is the best bike ever made. And I'm really glad it's still in one piece today because I wanna keep it for a long time. If you didn't notice from my surroundings, I'm here in Bentonville. I've been here for the entire month just making the same videos I was gonna make from home, but making them here. And so I wanna thank Visit Bentonville for making this trip possible. I suspect you probably didn't learn anything today, but if you did, great. And if you didn't, I hope you at least found this entertaining. Thanks for riding with me today. I'll see you next time.